In a remote area on the edge of the Yorkshire Moors lies the village of Haworth, its main street ascending steeply. Its stony surface intended for horse traffic still remains. Set at an angle is the Black Bull, where Bramwell entertained his cronies with stories made more colourful with a pint of ale or two. Behind was the old church. The present one was built and consecrated in 1880, 20 years after the last Bronte had gone. Today, Haworth is a mecca for thousands of tourists who come to see where this unique family lived and to find out more about them. The Bronte family arrived in 1820. The Reverend Patrick Bronte, his wife, Maria and his six young children. They all lived here for a time and with the exception of Anne, the youngest, they all died here. Patrick outlived them all and died at the age of 85. None of the others reached the age of 40. Eighteen twenty one. Eighteen twenty one brought misfortune and sorrow to my family. In January, Maria fell in. In April, all the children came down with scarlet fever. In May, Elizabeth, Maria's sister, came. By then, Maria was very sick with cancer. And in September, my beloved Maria passed away. Elizabeth stayed on to look after the children, teaching the girls fine sewing household jobs and how to become gentlewomen. Patrick had retired to his study. After a period of mourning, he started writing to his old flames, proposing marriage. He doesn't seem to be doing too well. Papa? Yes, Mariah. What do you want? Aunt Bramwell wants to know if you're coming down to eat with us. She says I have to persuade you. No. I'll have something on a tray, later on. What do you do, Pa? I'm just sorting out a few things. What sort of things? Oh, just bits and pieces. I might want to write my life story someday, and these might come in useful. That would be fun. Mama once told me you crossed the water to come to England. That's right. I came from Ireland. Were you born there? Yes. I was born in a little village called Emdale in the parish of Drumballyroney. That's a funny name. There are lots of funny names in Ireland. Is that why you talk funny? No, that's me Irish accent. Ah, oh, tis to be sure. Here, yeah. there's the house where I was born. It's a bit small, isn't it? It is, especially when I was the eldest of ten. Ten? How did your mother fit you all in? She didn't. We just moved as and when necessary. And that's the school I went to till I was 12. What did you do then? Then a kinsman of your grandmother taught me the classics and mathematics. And I became a school teacher at the age of 16. I might be a school teacher one day. That wouldn't surprise me. When did you stop being a school teacher? When I went to Cambridge. I got a BA, you know. I know what that is. I'm sure you do. How did you become a priest? I went to London to see the bishop who ordained me as deacon and later I was ordained priest. After a short spell in Essex I went to Shropshire where I met the Reverend Mormon, your Uncle William. I like Uncle William. Uncle John Fennell was there too. He was a headmaster at a boarding school. I like Uncle Fennell as well. Yes, we all became friends and ended up in Yorkshire. Your Uncle William was engaged to your Aunt Jane, Uncle Fennell's daughter. But where did you all go? Uncle John went to Woodhouse Grove School, William went to Bradford, and I ended up in Dewsbury. And you, young lady, had better skedaddle or you'll be in trouble. Are you coming? No. Well, Aunt Grandma will be disappointed. Dewsbury Minster was a very busy church. Patrick immediately had to officiate at a wedding, lead the Whitson walks to Earl's Eden, and whilst out walking himself, he rescued a boy from drowning in the River Calder. However, his first sermon turned out to be his last, 
as after the sermon he had an altercation with the vicar's father-in-law and vowed never to preach in that church ever again. He was officially inducted as Minister of St Peter's Church Hartshead in 1811. The church, especially the Castellated Tower, has Saxon origins, standing almost in isolation one mile from Hartshead village. Much later, William Morgan took Patrick to Woodhouse Grove School, where John Fennell was the new headmaster, to introduce him to his fiancée Jane. Patrick also met Maria Branwell, who had come to stay for a few weeks. When Patrick and Maria met, there was an instant attraction between them, and after a whirlwind romance, it's possible that during a day's outing and picnic at Kirkstall Abbey, that Patrick and Maria became engaged. A perfect setting for the occasion. On December the 29th of that year, there was a double wedding at Geisley Church between Patrick and Maria and William and Jane, each curate officiating for the other. After the wedding, Maria and Patrick set up home in Clough House, Hightown, near Liversidge, and during the next two years they produced two children, Maria and Elizabeth. At this time, Patrick's remuneration of approximately £60 per annum was stretched to its limits, which started him thinking about a move, but something happened to make that unnecessary. Come in, come in. Thank you. Be seated. It's a long time since you crossed our threshold. Well, I have been rather busy. Or perhaps preoccupied might be a better word. And how can I help? Well, it's more a question of how we can help each other. I think you'll have to explain that. It's rather delicate. You see, I'm no longer the carefree bachelor I used to be. Oh. No, I've found my soulmate. I'm glad to hear it. Anyone I know? I don't think so. Her name is Frances Walker. She lives at the Cells Hall near Huddersfield. Is she wealthy? Very. So you'll understand why I want to live a little nearer to Huddersfield. Thornton is a long way off. I'd like to keep an eye on her. Keep her from predators, if you know what I mean. Perfectly. But how can I help? I've heard that you have two children, is that right? That's right. And another on the way. Better still. I was wondering if, if I could... If we could... Well change livings. You mean you should come here and I should go to Thornton? Yes. Uh -huh. That way I would be a lot nearer to Francis and there would be a lot less work. Whereas on the other hand you would receive at least twice the remuneration that you're getting now. But there are a, a lot of remote farms at Thornton so it would mean a lot of extra walking. I accept. The walking is no problem. I walk miles for pleasure and walking for extra remuneration would be more than acceptable. Fine. And all we need is parochial permission. That shouldn't be too difficult. So Patrick became the perpetual curate of the Bell Chapel Thornton, built by the Freemasons in 1612. Over the years it had been repaired and renovated many times. Patrick added the copula. It stood on the edge of a valley, overlooking views of the hills. Patrick loved it and was at his most creative here adding several publications to his name. The parsonage was a modest double-fronted Georgian house. The protrusion was added when it later became a butcher's shop. Four children were born here, and including Elizabeth, they were all baptised in this font, which now stands surrounded by Bronte memorabilia in a new church, which stands on a new road opposite the site of the old bell chapel. In 1819, the curate of Howarth died. Patrick was recommended by a trustee and the vicar of Bradford appointed him, both without seeking the approval of the church trustees who objected strongly. Thus starting a set of weird circumstances. Patrick was advised to resign. He resigned. Patrick was then asked to preach at Howarth to be judged by the trustees. He refused. The Archbishop of York demanded him to preach at Haworth, which he did. The following week, the Reverend Redhead officiated and the entire congregation walked out. When the Reverend Redhead turned up again, they persuaded a befuddled boy to sit on a donkey the wrong way round, wearing an assortment of hats and to ride up the aisle to disrupt the service, which he did. 
when he turned up again, they sent a drunken chimney sweep, fresh from sweeping a chimney, who chased the terrified man round the graveyard before clasping him to his bosom and letting him escape into the black bull. So the congregation got their way and Patrick became the perpetual curate of Haworth. And then came Tabitha. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs>